Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. If you watched my previous video, you will know that I recently purchased a hot foil press. So that means that I can start experimenting with doing foil blocking on my designs. But I have one hurdle to get over first of all, and that is how am I going to make the dies for the hot foil press? There's two ways of doing it. Firstly is the more costly way, which is to outsource it to a die maker. Here in the UK, we do have a few die makers and most of them charge per square centimeter. And it can be quite costly. Uh, if you've got like an A4 design, you can imagine it's gonna be very, very expensive to get something like that made. The other method is probably more time consuming, but it should hopefully be cheaper in the long run, and that is to try and make them yourself. And this is what I'm gonna start experimenting with in these next videos. So I've got a metallic die here. I'm pretty sure this is probably made of magnesium. The metal dies are usually made of zinc, brass, copper sometimes, and magnesium. But there is an alternative that I have seen being used and that is polymer. These are used in the letterpress community and essentially this is light sensitive polymer and when you expose it and wash it out, you're left with your design in a relief on the actual plate. So you can ink this up just like you would a normal letterpress wood block or, or a metal block and you can print with it. I have seen people using these to do foil blocking as well. So I think this is going to be a cheap alternative instead of outsourcing it and getting them made with metal. Now, before I go any further, I would just like to say thank you to Lisa at Lion Bay Press. She runs a store that sells various different letterpress supplies, including the polymer plates, when that's where I bought them from. She helped me out a ton, give me lots of helpful information, and she's even done experiments herself with the polymer plates and foil blocking. So it was really good to chat to her and learn about this new medium. So yeah, thank you very much, Lisa. If you are in the UK and you need some letterpress supplies, I highly recommend checking out her store. This is not sponsored by her. I'm not being paid to say this. I've just simply discovered her store on Google and I ended up buying stuff and chatting to her. We're going to be doing two experiments with these plates. First of all, we're going to be trying out the plastic backed plates. We're going to try and just expose the test strip and we're just going to see if we can get any sort of print to transfer on the paper. Lisa at Lion Bay Press has also been kind enough to send me some uh, samples of the metal backed polymer plates. And I think these would probably be better suited for foil blocking because you've got the metal backing, which makes it a little bit more tougher and it also helps to uh, conduct the heat as well. And remember, if you've got any questions about these processes or these materials or foil blocking, feel free to put a comment below and I'll be happy to answer any questions. This is a new thing for me. Uh, I've you know, been, been learning about this, this process a bit in the last few months while I was thinking about getting a hot foil press. So I'm sure I can help out other, other newcomers to this type of stuff. Anyway, let's get experimenting. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my test strip of photo polymer. I've got my exposure strip and all I'm going to use is just a sheet of glass from a picture frame and just going to use some hard cardboard as a backing. This is just going to be a really really quick test. When you get the photopolymer sheet one side has a plastic backing the other side has a protective sheet so you take that off you can discard that. So this is the side that you're going to expose so this probably isn't the right size but I kind of know roughly what the exposure is going to be so if we're just close to seven, that'll be okay. And you probably want a little bit of a better setup than this if you are using actual artwork, but I'm just gonna clip this in just to kind of hold it down. And now it's ready to expose. So this is my little DIY setup. I've got my UV 200 watt chip. I've got it about 30 centimeters distance away from the plate. I've exposed it for a minute, a minute and a half. Let's wash it out now and see if we've got the exposure right. So we just got our exposed plate and we're just going to drop it into some hot water and just let it soak for a few minutes. So I'm ready, you can see that it's showing the, showing the strip and you just want to get a soft brush just to brush it away. Okay, so we've we've dried it and then we've 
just cured it again for another five minutes uh, just to harden the polymer. So now it is ready to go onto the press. To stick the polymer plate to the, to the heat bed, I'm gonna use some dye bond tape. This is special adhesive tape um, that you use for uh, attaching plates to, to hotbeds. It's quite expensive to buy in really big rolls. There's a shop in, if you're in the UK, that sells it by the meter. Uh, it's where I got it from. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description for it because a meter will last you for absolutely ages. So you really don't need to buy like a huge roll of it. So all you do is you just stick it onto the back of the plate. Usually you want it in two or three places. And then all you do is you just stick it to the plate when it's hot, press it, and then it will be stuck to the plate. And to get it off, all you need to do is just heat up your plate and you can just use a, a scraper and it will just come off. If you're gonna be doing this with artwork, obviously you would get your registration all set up on your design. You would stick it onto your design and then you would place it on, but for just, this is just an experiment. So I'm just gonna literally stick it on with my hand. And there we go. Then we'll just clamp it just to make sure that it is stuck. And there we go. Oh, I've absolutely transferred some of the, some of the foil onto uh, my previous design there, but that doesn't matter. We've got our bit of paper, put the foil on it. And we'll just see if that, okay. So a little tiny bit, not too much. Let's just lift this up. Let's give it another go. So it's transferring a little bit, but obviously not the entire design. I'm not sure why. Okay, so I've done about 10 test prints at various different temperatures, uh, ranging from 130 all the way up to 155. And as you can see, this side is printing, but for some reason, this isn't coming out too well. The text as well, it's probably because maybe this was, the, the letters are worn down a little bit when I was processing it, but yeah, I'd pretty say this was a foul. But you can see that the polymer has actually held up pretty well. It's just starting to kind of like bubble and you can see that it's actually kind of like breaking apart here, the polymer. So maybe I'm not too sure if it wasn't exposed long enough to cure it or if maybe it's just breaking apart from the pressure and the heat. Again, I don't think these are specifically designed to be used for hot foiling, but I, I know that people do have some success with it. At this kind of temperature, at the moment, it's about 150. The plate is actually pretty soft. I mean, I can press it in with my, with my finger. So this would maybe explain why I'm not having a very good time trying to get an impression. So I'm gonna now test the, the steel-backed plates. So this has just got a plastic plate at the back you can get steel backed um, that's what i'm going to test next i'm also going to double the cure time just to see if that does actually make it any more tougher and hold up a little bit better so here is the steel backed polymer plate i've already exposed it just be careful when you're cutting this because i'm using scissors and it creates these little barbs and i've kind of stabbed myself a few times and it's really painful because it really digs into your fingers so we're just going to drop it in We'll just do the same as what we usually do. So you can see the, the design is already coming out. For this one, I've just actually done one of my designs. I'm just kind of experimenting with just some different shapes in and see the kind of detail that you can get from exposing. So it's just the same as what we did before. Uh, I've just let it dry, I, I've cured it, and now I'm just gonna place it on the bed. Press it in for a few seconds. I want to kind of flatten it out as well because when you're cutting it with scissors, preferably you should cut it with a guillotine, but I was using scissors so it kind of buckles the, the steel back in a little bit. That has not worked. This is kind of the problem that I'm having here. I've just put it on, I just pressed it up against the bed and now it's all just kind of broken apart. Perhaps it hasn't been cured long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off another test strip and instead of actually exposing an image on it, this time I'm, I'm just literally gonna expose a strip and just see 
if it still breaks apart when I let it expose for a very, very long time. I'm gonna give it like 20 minutes underneath the, the UV. I've got a new, I've got a new little test strip here. It's not working, transferring any foil at 120, 130, 140. So now we're getting up to 150. And you can see here, it's just starting to transfer now. So you really have to pump up the heat quite a bit. It looks like it's holding up fine. We'll try maybe a little bit more pressure. I think we're getting somewhere now and it's, it's the heat. You really need to crank up the heat with this. I've now got it on 160. Let's just see. So you can see now it's starting to transfer nearly the whole entire rectangle. So it's coming out a bit better now. Maybe it needs a little bit more pressure or maybe it needs a little bit more heat. We're near enough there now. We're getting the whole entire thing. So it does work. It just needs to be really, really, really hot. This is at 160. You can see that it's starting to just bubble a little bit. So this is the problem. I feel like the foil needs a lot of heat to transfer. The plate just starts to break down a little bit. So I'm not too sure why it keeps on doing this. So we've done three test strips with the steel backed photopolymer. You can see that all of them have broken apart. This one had a cure time of five minutes in total. That's, that's exposing and post cure. This one had two minutes exposure and then a 20 minute post cure. And you can see that it's still just kind of broken apart here. This one I left outside in direct sunlight for about four hours because I think that perhaps my UV exposure unit is maybe at the end of the spectrum that these polymer plates need. In the documentation, it says that you should expose on a wavelength between 300 and 400. And I know that my 200 watt UV chip emits around 395 to 405 on the UV spectrum. So I, I'm at the very end of the spectrum of what you should be exposing these plates to. So maybe that is the reason, but this one had as I said, direct sunlight. We actually had a really nice sunny day yesterday. And this one still broke apart. But we did get some good results at least. So this one did manage to print the whole entire thing. You can see that this edge here is just this bit where I've, where it's just kind of sliced off. I sliced off a bit when I was cutting it with scissors. So that's why it doesn't look that good. But I was able to transfer the foil fully. It's a little bit rough around the edges. It's definitely promising and it gives me enough reason to carry on experimenting and trying to get some better results. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research. I'm gonna try and talk to, to Yobo, who are the manufacturers of these plates and see if they can give me any advice. But that's it for now, I will end it there.